Welcome, this is 49C1 and this is the speed of sound waves. So now we're dealing with sound. Uh, first bit we're going to look at is a bit of a comparison. So we did before that the speed of uh, a wave on a string, if you like the speed of the energy, is going to be the square root of T which was the tension over mu which was the mass per unit length and we're going to give you another equation here which says that for air the speed of sound propagating through air is equal to the square root of the bulk modulus over the density um, let's just think about that for a minute uh, tension is basically the force and density is and sorry and this uh, mass per unit length is uh, the kilograms per meter and here bulk modulus remember about bulk moduli there was the Young's modulus there was the shear modulus and there was the bulk modulus the bulk modulus was the uh, uh, three-dimensional modulus um, well that had units of Pascal which is force per unit area and then the density is equal to kilograms per meter cubed can you see what's going on here if I have uh, they're, they're similar that's what I'm, I'm basically saying this is an inertial term to do with inertia this is an inertial term it's to do with inertia this is a, a tensile term this is a tensile term so there's some similarity between these two equations as always I like to look with a new equation especially when I don't know where it comes from I like to look and see do the the units or the dimensions make sense well the dimensions or the, uh, the units for velocity is meters per second and for bulk modulus, as we said, it was the force per unit area, which would be kilograms uh, meters per second squared. There's my force divided by meters squared. Well, there's the top half of it. And then we have, for the density, I have kilograms over meters cubed. So I've got to do a bit of finagling here. So I have kilograms meters per second squared and then I take this basically m squared over 1 and I flip it to make it fit onto this so this would be 1 over meter squared that's got the top half done and then I take this bottom half and I do the same thing so that I flip it so that would be meters cubed over kilograms and if I look at that then I have uh, kilograms cancel meters to the fourth on top and then meters squared on the bottom second squared well that becomes meters squared over second squared oh of course yeah we're square rooting this so if I square root it I get meters per second so the units work out um, okay, so nice equation. There's also another equation here, which is a, a first glance. Uh, it seems complicated. It's the velocity at any given temperature for air is equal to 331, a magic number perhaps, square root of 1 plus Tc, the temperature in centigrade, over 273. And at first glance, somebody would say, hold on, this is supposed to be in meters per second, and this is supposed to be in meters per second, but it's in TC. Well, what's going on here is they've substituted in some standard units. This is the velocity at zero degree C, and this is the absolute temperature at zero degree C. So we have a velocity equals a velocity uh, modified by a number this is temperature in degree C over temperature in degree C and we get 
um, uh, well, temperature over temperature. <laughs> and so we get this thing uh, um, dimensionally working out. This is an empirical relationship. So let's try some of these. So we're going to say sound propagates through air that has a bulk modulus. So my bulk modulus is equal to 1.2 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. Let's just remind ourselves the bulk modulus, if we take a cube and we squish it, a cube of stuff and squish it, we get a smaller cube. And we said that the bulk modulus was, what was it? The stress over the strain. And we got a, a, a numerical value for that, which depends upon the substance. And so this is uh, 1.2 times 10 to the 5 Pascal. And then we have a density, which equals 1.2 kilograms per meter cubed. These are realistic numbers. Sometimes I use uh, simple numbers, but sometimes I like to use realistic numbers, and these are realistic. And we'd like to find the velocity of sound. So we said the velocity of sound was equal to, let's have a look, it was the square root of the bulk modulus over the density. And so it's going to be the square root of 1.2 times 10 to the 5 over 1.2. So the velocity is equal to uh, 1 times 10 to the 5. Find the square root of it. So that's going to equal, if I get my calculator, it's going to be second square root 1 second ee to the 5. Close parentheses, enter. I'm going to get... 316.2. This equals 316.2 meters per second. Cool. Now, you could change it if you were dealing with um, gold and you decided if you knew the bulk modulus value and you knew the density value, you could work out the speed at which the energy passes through the gold. It's a useful equation. Beneath it, we have an equation which is to do with uh, the temperature dependence of air velocity. Now, when you change the temperature of air, you change the density and the like, things change. So um, we could give the numbers to be able to do the equation on top. But there's also a simpler uh, way of doing this, where we say, OK, I want to know the speed uh, of sound when the temperature is equal to 38 degrees C. And I say my velocity at a given temperature is equal to 331. That's the, that's the speed of sound at zero degrees C plus TC over 273. So it's V is equal to 331 times the square root of this modifying factor, which is one plus TC over 273. So V is equal to 331 times the square root of 1 plus 38 over 273. And so this is where people sometimes run into calculator problems. I like to work from the complicated bit outwards. So I'm going to say 38 divided by 273, enter. That's that bit sorted out. And then I'm going to add 1 onto that. That's that bit sorted out. I'm going to say second square root, second answer. That's the next bit worked out. And I'm going to say times 313, uh, 331. That bit worked out. So I'm getting 353.3. Looks like 353.3 meters per second. Uh, sometimes people, they never show whether to put a negative sign for this or a positive sign for this, uh, this factor in the middle. Let me get something where you can see like that. They, around here, they're worried about should it be positive or should it be negative. And if you think about it, if the temperature increases 
I would expect to get a bigger velocity. Um, so it should be a positive sign. This is a this is a modifying factor. It's taking the 331 and changing it by a, a an amount. And as the temperature increases, I expect the the velocity of sounding air to increase. So there we have it.